So why directionals? Because of it all started with directionals and then skating, snowboarding all switched to regular symmetricals and then snowboarding, I mean we inf were influenced by snowboarding primarily A and lot. Yeah. once they started coming out with directionals that looked really functional but also fun, I think that was probably like when we started cutting up boards like this and yeah. just making our own. Usually we'd break them first. Yeah, because we didn't have enough boards to just like, oh, we have a plethora of boards, so we're just going to start cutting them up and making fun shapes. It always, it started as we chipped the end of a board or like get a D-lamb somewhere, and then we're like, well, fuck it, let's just cut this section out, and then started kind of making directional shapes like that. And they would last just as long or more longer sometimes than trying to fix like a D-lamb, because then eventually the D-lamb opens up and rips everything off again. Yeah. So we just cut that out. And, and then give the board new life. Yeah. And I feel like as we as we were cutting and then we just start cutting more and more and then we figured out that you could cut a lot out of a wakeboard and it would still pretty much ride the same. Yeah. So then that's when we started cutting more and making more aggressive tail scoops and those They turned into like 39s. And, yeah. Like a, at the time like a like that batman board that we just cut the entire tail off of but then we figured out that you could ride it and switch just the same and these boards really didn't react that much different even after you cut away so much material so then and then i feel like after doing years of that like you were getting that that one like we cut the pitchfork out of uh out of the reflex or coalition one of the early yeah, the ones deeper pitchfork you had one. like a hand drag pitchfork yeah tube mm -hmm. thing. Yep. And, and that like, one was like this big by yeah. the end because we cut the tip and the tail. Yeah. And it wound up being tiny. And it's just cool, you know, to see a photo. You can't get a photo like that with a regular board. You can't wrap a regular board around a rail like that. And I feel like after it started getting some hype and stuff, then, you know, Jeff being our team manager and he's always open to new ideas and stuff, we were like, what if we made a production directional wakeboard because I mean snowboarding snowboarding started as directionals then went to popsicles then started dipping back into directionals and now if you go to a mountain like I mean majority of pro riders are riding directionals whether at least it's like a directional stance on a yeah. symmetrical board whether it's all mountain or in the park like they're killing it I mean just look at our boy Zeb on yeah. this monstrosity of a directional and just it's got a death fork on one end and yeah. it's still good and still killing it doing everything and way more that a snowboarder can do well the i guess that the uh when we were cutting them and making them so short it also kind of spurred the actual movement with slingshot because we were like we can't make the boards as big as we want them to be. Yeah, because we're just cutting off. As soon off as we start board. cutting them, then they just get smaller mm -hmm. and smaller. So it's like if we have the opportunity to make a board from scratch, then I think we can make something sick and really hype up the industry with photos and videos that we can get and tricks that you can't do on a normal board because you don't have so much nose or that scoop on the end to lock into pipes and shit like that so and you can adjust your stance to make all these boards ride like completely different so it's like just the board will change the way you ride like you yeah. got a scoop you want to do a scoop trick on a pipe you can't do that on a normal board but then all of a sudden you want to set your stance all the way back and have like a rocket nose on one end you can do that too so it's like and just more fun and the R&D process of going through all these boards and experimenting with new shapes it's like it's just so fun because like who wants to ride a popsicle for the rest of your life you know it's like it's always so fun to cut a new board and you're like oh this one's gonna ride sick and then either it does or it doesn't it doesn't really matter because then it still pushes you forward into what works and what doesn't work and so from cutting shapes and getting an idea and then going into production with slingshot and then I mean, even the first production board, it was like, it was sick, but then we're always making changes. And I feel like over the past three years, we've really kind of narrowed it down to what really works as a directional shape. And because of all that R&D, we've come up with this beauty. We're looking at it. And then on top of that, on the other end, we've come up 
through the directional boards, we've come up with a symmetrical board that is the best board just all around of all time. It is. It really is. It really is. And uh, that would have never happened if we wouldn't have had the opportunity to just play around and like yeah. actually just be like, we want one nose to look like a huge spoon and the tail to be small. And then it was like, well, we want to try one with two big spoons. Yeah. And then this one was, so the Space Raider from now what you're watching last year, it had that this exact big scooped up nose From and here. after riding that board it was like i mean that board's amazing in itself it's directional but then the nose of it was just like incredible it was like for for tail pressing or nose pressing or doing like the the late tail drag 180s and stuff on the water it was like the best feeling in the world so then it was like what if we had this nose on both sides of the board what would that be yeah and yeah. even with it they the two ride distinctively different enough to where you can enjoy both of them equally yeah. but like this one is just an upgraded model but like if you ride this one and then go ride the raider the, the way that one rides will be you know different enough to be a totally fun in a completely different way yeah this is the best wakeboard that has ever been made to date period stamp it is and anyone that we put on it agrees instantly and you can even just just watching someone else ride this board if you've never ridden it it really you're like what is that i want to mm -hmm. try it because it looks so much different with its narrow profile and just the scoops on the end like the the nose press and tail press that this man can do on this board is like, it's- Anyone can do them with true. this board. That's the trick. But, <laughs> as you'll probably see in some of these product videos, that nose press and tail press, it's like, it's something special because that, it, what he does, like what this board can do couldn't be done before. Mm -hmm. And now- it was like a a gimmick before like if you made a board that could do what this one did you sacrificed every other aspect of the board you're not going to hit a kicker with it you're yeah. not going to do a huge gap transfer to rail but this one does everything and it feels like you're riding just the, the most playful thing ever it's hard to fall yeah like you save so many falls and this one too because they got the chimed rails all the way around and that's another thing we got to experiment with this time because you know, it's like we've made so many directionals and they're really fast and bitey and we never got to put chime rails on any of them. Yeah. So then for this batch, we're like, let's just try to run it as far around the whole thing as possible for both. And it's definitely made these boards like that much better. And this board is 165 centimeters and to the normal person, they're gonna say, oh my God, that's huge. It is not. You need to trust us. We've are indeed a bunch of different sizes, and if you are a grown man, this is the size board you need to ride. And if you're not a grown man, we got some stuff in the works for you. Don't, yeah, don't stress. Don't hey, this board is also 165, and if you're a grown man, you should ride this size. But if you're not a grown man, this will be offered in a 150, which I think can be ridden from anywhere up to being a grown man. Yeah. Or it looks woman. it looks like a kid's board all honestly when you look at it and and it's a 150 which is you know most people think is huge but when you look at it on the ground it looks like a kid's board so I think that this is going to change a lot of how people think about board sizes yeah the width has a ton to do with it too like yeah because we we have a I mean spoiler alert tapers. it doesn't really matter but we have a 150 prototype of the melter and that 150 on the ground looks like a super ground. Yeah. Like it's crazy. And I think that that's due to just the narrow shape, I guess. But like, don't be scared of the 165. This thing is so light and whippy and fast and maneuverable and edging mm -hmm. so quick and perfect. So it's insane. trust us, we've, we've done our research and this is the one.
The only research we haven't done is taking this thing through some powder in the snow. So if anybody gets a hold of one of those who has the opportunity, yeah. please film or it and send it this to us. One. And this one also. This one's probably better. This might that. be the best powder snowboard that has never been ridden in the powder. A little off topic, but someone <laughs> do it. He's so <laughs> sick, dude. Oh my god. I just someone to do where do you see I'll call it a trend? Where do you see this trend going for me? I think it'll probably the, as long as people try these two right here, I think it'll continue to grow because of the fact that we're trying to make these as functional as possible. Yeah. Whereas I think in the past, if somebody did a directional board, it was kind of like a throwback or more of like a like a novelty sort of thing. Absolutely. And these are like they make they enhance riding, but you can do all of your traditional stuff and most of it even better. Like yeah. air tricks with these straight or like concave edges are insane. Um, hitting the wake with them with no fins. Like this board behind the boat is insane. You don't you don't really need the fins, it still tracks. It's just a different sort of phenomenon with having the skinnier shape and yeah. I've seen it, you know, we've seen it in a couple other companies trying to go to this contoured sort of profile and uh, I think that as more companies are getting on board, as long as we're leading the charge, everyone's going to have to make them more functional. And I think if we're doing it right, we should be following suit with what snowboarding's kind of paving the way with. And yeah, I think I think like just just how it happened in snowboarding, I think especially with the directional trend, I think we just have to wait in until it becomes normalized, you know? Mm -hmm. Because in snowboarding it was already a thing and then it went to popsicles and then it was going back and now it's so normalized that it's like it's not a shock to see these directionals on the mountain and i think we'll eventually do the same thing for the wake parks is it's no longer going to be like oh my god what is that mm -hmm. board and it's just like that's a directional board mm -hmm. and i think with time i think we're going to do that and i think we are already doing for sure and all these snowboard companies pretty much I mean I don't think there's a single snowboard company now that doesn't have a specific directional lineup like yeah they have a whole line of boards but then they also have almost just as many that are all directional and probably sell just as many of them because you see them everywhere on the mountain at the Olympics last year there was literally not one pro snowboarder that wasn't either riding a directional or riding a directional stance on a popsicle. I swear to God, it was insane. And that even blows my mind because they're charging 40, 50 kilometers into a mega booter switch stance with the snub nose in the front. Mm, like and off like, center. And like, yeah, like, not worried about it not, because yeah, you don't have that's to be. crazy. <laughs> and as far as this shape goes, this is the future of wakeboards, I think. Like, and I think it's time for that switch up because how long have we been riding the just oval shaped boards? Like, look at the entire industry and how similar is every single board. I think Liquid Force was ahead of its time with the noodle. Mm -hmm. And Hyperlight was way ahead of their time with the Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they could have made, if they could have stuck with the Rome, they might have been the ones to do this. Which, yeah. You know, the, it's definitely influenced us growing up, like growing up with all this stuff. But like, this does what that board did, but it does everything else better yeah. than anything. I feel like some of the yeah. other board companies, they they make these experimental boards, and it's they if they don't move the needle enough. They just chop them from yeah. the line, but it's sometimes it's not always about moving the needle. It's about trying, like, really believing in an idea and sticking to it long enough to where then it will move yeah. the needle in the future. You got to figure out what works and and know. give it time for people to adjust because people need to adjust to new products. It's not just like. You're not just gonna believe what we say and go buy a bunch of boards. You're gonna have to ride it and stuff and watch other people ride it. Experience it for yourself. And, and you will. And <laughs> you should. Yes, Steve. Uh, 
Um, doing great. That looks good. Just decided that this will be a long version on YouTube. I yeah. Think. We'll make a short something. Ba, ba, ba. Some questions. More questions. Mm -hmm. um, but wrap it up for this longer video. Okay. Like, if that's an interesting, you really want to try one of those. Check it, so check it out from Slingshot. Uh, well, we, we've been talking with like the sales team and stuff about getting more prototypes to cables and stuff for people to test out so people don't have to spend $600. Yeah, well, we don't know if that happens, right? No, I, I mean, yeah, I guess not. We'll just, yeah, be like when we're saying check out Slingshot, Slingshot Sports yeah, to get them, you can... Or just be like, tell your local cable park owner to pick one of these up so you can demo it. And yeah, I know. No? It's okay. a... <laughs> We're not really That's selling. Um, yeah, let's find a way to wrap it up. Like, um, what do you say? Talk about how much maybe you've enjoyed like, the process of getting to the shape and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh. Like, yeah, talk about how much you enjoy riding it. Yeah. yeah. And that everybody who gets a chance to try it, try it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Okay. If it is. It is. It is. It is. I mean, they, yeah. they are. Okay. Good. So, so for the, uh, as for the shapes and how we came to be with, you know, this final shape and and this final shape, it's all been a process. We've had to figure it out over the years and for you. Well, I mean, since four year, tail one. Four years four production years. process. Keep it short, like really short. Okay. Like oh. a minute, max. Okay. Like okay. We already like, tried to like go back again okay. and, and explain too much. Gotcha. Just get that people hyped on. All right, cool, just do it. I'll say, yep. Yep. I don't, okay. You're on it. On it. If we, if I'm just saying, if we start bouncing, that's yeah, we're good. Yeah, we can't bounce because then right it's going to be ten minutes. Yes. Okay. okay. All right, you're up. Right okay. Now. All right. Okay, Nick Green. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a pretty incredible process over the past four years, just coming up with all these designs and finally nailing down stuff that we really think is the future of wakeboarding. And myself has been riding pretty much exclusively the directional for two, three years now. And uh, not exclusively, but it's my favorite board. And now having this one, it's the best one we've made yet. And having this to complement it, it's like, I never wanna, I never wanna stay on one or the other for more than you know one set at a time. So. I really think we've nailed it, and I think you think we've nailed it. It's insane. They're insane. They're perfect. You're perfect. You're gonna love it. So the same thing again. Same space rover or space mantle at once. Okay. Nice. Gotcha. <laughs> you say it once. Like You're right. You're yeah, right. It's Betty Butter Butter Tub of Bitter Butter, but she said this rubber bread. Okay. <laughs> and the size is too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 150. All right. Don't forget 150. Oh yeah. So it's been a pretty incredible process being able to come up with these shapes over all these years and finally locking in the stuff that we think is absolutely the best thing we've come up with by putting them all, all together. And uh, the space rover has come, you know, a long way since the space tombs and put the best parts about each one of those in there and we have a 150 now for the younger ones because we think it's not exclusive to just the big guys and girls and uh, it's really the best board yet and um, I think that this space melter happens to be the best board of all time and it's gonna be hard to decide which one you want to ride every day so I think you're gonna need both of them and also comes in a 165 again don't be scared of the number it's just a number they're amazing. It's insane. We can't wait for you to try them and see your footage. Love Same. you.